Hey there everybody, Andrew King here, Editor-in-Chief of Canadian Musician, back with you live from ECMA 2018 in Halifax, joined by Stuart McNeil, one-fifth of, I think it's fair to say, East Coast institution, the Barra McNeils, uh, performed last night as part of the awards gala, and uh, here for a great weekend, another great it's weekend really of great ECMAs. To be back. Yeah. Just, uh, great to see familiar faces and hear some of the great new talent. Wow, it's uh, very exciting. Excellent. Oh, uh, latest record we should tell people about on the bright side, um, and I guess kind of a soft launch for the tour we could say this weekend. Yes. Uh, yeah, we've done a pre-release on the, a single "Live in the Dream." Mm -hmm. so that, that's the track that we performed last night, and uh, it's uh, the album is. Uh, I'm pretty proud of it. it it's, it's our first studio, uh, uh, just Barry McNeil project. Uh, yeah. In, in quite a few years, and uh, it's it is the uh, what a lot of people expect uh, as far as being a mix of uh, traditional music, but also contemporary songs. Of course, with an arsenal of uh, instruments that people who know the Baron McNeils are <laughs> familiar with. You know the the borons and the harps and the bazookis and the fiddles and, and all the all the, that goes with it. Yeah, and of course the. Uh, the family vocals and Lucy's voice has never sounded better. There's some exquisite ballads that she sings on the album that they just uh, they move me every time I hear them. They're oh, agreed wonderful. completely. And actually, you, you set me up beautifully. I I was going to try and list off your full uh, uh, instrumental credit list, and uh, after writing down about seven different things, accordion, guitar, bazooka, yeah, I, I gave up. Just a bunch of them. <laughs> just a bunch of them. Um, but yeah, let, let's talk a bit about the record, uh, Living the Dream, that is a tune that you wrote, if I'm yeah, not mistaken. Living, Living the Dream is a tune that I wrote. I suppose it's, uh, uh, maybe it's a song about the poor and the rich and uh, the, uh, the race that we're in to, to get to the end of our lives sometimes and, uh, mm. and how complicated and how simple life can be. Oh, <laughs> so that's about the, that's all. Like about the best I can sum up. <laughs> well, fair enough. Uh, I'm curious about that. Then, uh, like with you having the writing credit for that one, um, a lot of Barry McNeil's material is original. Uh, some great arrangements, different takes on mm -hmm. traditional classical tunes. Um, but yeah, for for the original compositions, I'm curious about if there's any kind of set formula or, or even a typical way that these songs come to be considering the different members and all the different instruments there, there is but uh, I, I suppose uh, you know I, I do a lot of writing but uh, there's there's uh, there's a certain thing that makes it a Barry McNeil song and hmm. when it comes in uh, we'll, we'll bring something in and it's it uh, there's certainly a democracy involved as far as what we record we we would rather record uh, somebody else's song if it's a better fit for the band right. at any given time and uh, but at the same time uh, there's just some great music within the band like including uh, uh, there's a, a, a actually a, a gorgeous waltz that uh, Floyd uh, composed mm -hmm. and uh, on the album and that's uh, it's just very interesting it's it's got a it's it's out I think it's a bit outside the envelope of what people think the Bear McNeils would record as an instrumental so hmm. there's but at the same it's it's old but it feels new so that I think that's maybe that's the key is, is to always keep that that uh, trip back and trip forward at the same time. I, w I was gonna say I think that's kind of a defining characteristic of uh, the Barry McNeils and uh, something that draws people so well is you've got these traditional these very familiar sounds mm -hmm. and yet uh, there's always something fresh being injected into them it never feels like a throwback actor. Well, we've been doing this for over 30 years, yeah. and uh, I think part of the reason that we do keep doing it is uh, that uh, we th we like to keep it interesting for the band. It's, it's, there are, everybody is a multi-instrumentalist, everybody does sing, and uh, and we all were very much involved in the process of making the albums. It's, mm -hmm. not, it's not a factory that it's put together, and we've been very fortunate to to record our last uh, number of projects in Cape Breton, and uh, Jamie Foles has been uh, uh, co-producing the albums, and he's an amazing engineer, and just just working with the family dy dynamic, having that experience, knowing all the personalities, yeah, and, and uh, what you know what does work for everybody. I, I think think that's very important to uh, 
to when you get that relationship, it's uh, it, there's a real comfort, and uh, you know everybody just uh, kind of digs in and uh, and enjoys the project. I think mm -hmm. th this album was very much a labor of joy. So. Oh, well, that's great to hear. Yeah. Uh, I hope you don't mind me uh, trying to pry into the inter-musician slash inter-familial relationship. Yeah, yeah. Uh, but I'm curious, like with five siblings, um, do you have to compartmentalize when you're being creative or when there's a focus on the Bear McNeils? Or like, is any time you guys are together in different groups a time that could be a, a musical collaboration? Well, it, you know, it's, it's funny because... Uh, Sometimes things happen slowly just because of the family dynamic when we get together. It's, you know, sometimes it can, it takes a while before you get down to work just because right. you talk about family <laughs> stuff. And, and, uh, but that's okay because I think as, as time goes on, we appreciate more how the band works and there's, there's, a, there's a dysfunctional thing about it that works in spite of itself. Okay. And, and but uh, you know, but I think that's the nature of any band. You know, some bands I, I've talked to successful bands before that uh, they say uh, they're a band that uh, well we're a family, and as a family to play professionally we had to learn to be a band. Okay. You know, there's just huh. the things you have to do to to function. You know, there's all these different uh, uh, tasks that have to be done, and. Uh, but other people, there's successful bands who have success very early, and they have to learn to be a family mm. <laughs> and to get along and to get that family dynamic. So, you know, whether you're a family or not uh, in this uh -huh. business, you certainly have to you have to uh, get along somehow as a, as a, a dysfunctional or functional <laughs> family or a band. Yeah, that's an interesting <laughs> perspective. Um, Another one I'm curious about, uh, you mentioned the first new studio album uh, in mm -hmm. quite some time, released of not Holiday or, yeah, or well otherwise. Yeah, we've done, uh, uh, we've, we've, uh, we do a major Christmas tour. Yes. That uh, starts on the west coast of uh, Canada, and uh, we finish up on the east coast, and it, it usually starts, it's about, it starts in the middle of November usually, and we finish uh, to right around, just before Christmas, and it's uh, it's become really popular, and mm -hmm. uh, so we've we've uh, we've, we've uh, produced three album projects for that and various specials, and uh, but there's also been symphony projects we've been involved with right. live albums and uh, and there's been live Bear McNeil album projects. There, there was a one year during Celtic Colors Festival we recorded with a different artist every day. Right. The Celtic Colors session. So we've had all these projects, but it's been a while since we've actually just had a Barry McNeil studio project. Right. And uh, that's why we're, we're just very excited to have uh, On the Bright Side uh, released. Uh, so on that note, uh, you're leading me beautifully into things I want to ask. <laughs> um, for an act that is so well known for uh, its live show, I'm curious about how cognizant you are of like how material is going to translate to the stage when you're making a record, particularly one like it on the bright side. It is very much a part of it. Yeah, it, it is very much a part of it. You know, but there's there, there's a lot of material in this that we're already working into the shows, and uh, but there's stuff as well that I don't know if we'll ever do them in the show, but that's okay. Hmm. Yeah, that's okay. They'll be around long after we're gone. <laughs> <laughs> oh, indeed. It's, yeah, the catalog uh, is expansive. BarryMcNeils.com, by the way, is uh, the home base. You can check out uh, previous releases. Of course, here's some new stuff from On the Bright Side. Um, yeah, we're here at ECMA. I guess I'd be remiss not to ask. Uh, you know, at this stage in your career, a lot of folks come here to learn and uh, try to generate export yes. opportunities. But I mean, not to say that there's not always room for growth. But you know, the Barry McNeils are a very, very established group. Um, but do you still, even if it's just reconnecting with old friends, like, what is it that draws you to events like the ECMAs? And uh, well, it's we don't make it. It's it's been quite a few years since we've yeah. been, uh, been around for the ECM uh, festivities, and but it is nice. It's nice to get back just because you know there's there's always new people, new players in the business. Uh, uh, it just it's you know it's the kind of thing if you don't come, you don't know what's going on, I guess. And uh, 
So, and the industry is, is really, it's always changing and mm -hmm. uh, it's just interesting to, to sort of, you know, talk to people about how that uh, brainstorm about how things are changing and, and how the dynamic of uh, just uh, this crazy thing we call the music business. You know why we still do it? Yeah, and it it uh, you know there's, there's probably a lot easier ways that you could uh, try to figure out to uh, to make a living. But you know it, it's obviously a passion for people, and and uh, it's you know it, it's I, I suppose you 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 come to events like this in a big way to reconnect mm -hmm. and uh, and also just to take stock of what you do and. And realize that uh, you have to make your own path. You, everybody is, you can everybody, everybody preaches the gospel, but uh, you have to create your own. <laughs> oh, right on. Uh, if I can ask one more, I guess forward-looking one. Um, but yeah, as, as bastions of uh, traditional East Coast Celtic-inspired sounds. Um, you know, Cape Breton has a very rich history of of music, particularly of those styles. Um, really curious as to you know from the outside kind of looking in from your perspective as a resident of um, mm -hmm. the island what's the scene like in Cape Breton right now on the trad Celtic side are you optimistic about uh, future it's, generations it's, it's very vibrant it's excellent uh, there's uh, you know there's tra traditional music is very strong uh, there's a, a lot of different different uh, genres of music that are that are really doing well. There's a you know there's great uh, there's a lot of great writing. Uh, you know, theater is stronger probably than it's ever been. Nice. Cape Breton artists uh, authors are being uh, celebrated internationally, and uh, it's become very much uh, uh, a a place that's. Uh, a pillar for creativity, and I think the the nature and the ruggedness of the, the landscape has certainly has an energy that uh, inspires people. And you know, it's people, artists from New York, come to Cape Breton. They spend a lot of time there. There's yeah, uh, people from people from all over the world come to Cape Breton, and uh, it's uh, it's it's a unique place. And for artists, uh, it has a lot to offer. Oh, outstanding. Uh, Stuart McNeil, Baron McNeil's On the Bright Side is the album, Living the Dream is the single, penned by Stuart. Um, yeah, we were performing the gala last night. Uh, anything else? Uh, the tour begins late May, Baron yeah, we're, be, uh, we're doing a lot of Ontario shows in, uh, uh, yeah. Some great late theaters. Late May, in June, and uh, it's summertime, we're out doing some festivals and stuff around the Maritimes as well. and. Uh, yeah, just check up, uh, check us out on Facebook. Or it's easy. You're already on Facebook. <laughs> there you go. Spot on, Stuart. It's <laughs> been a privilege. Thank Stuart, you very much. Fun. And thanks again, Trevor. Pigeon Row.